C, July 2nd, 2012. I'm Larry Hanlon, Vice Chair. Uh, roll call, please. Thank you. Don Wright, Barkley Hills. Walter White, Barkley Hills. Howard Post, Kanima. Here. Paul Edgar, Kanima. Here. Larry Hanlon, Caulfield. Here. Rachel Gunderson from the Chamber is excused. Kathy Hogan from Here. Hazelgrove. Here. Tom O'Brien, Hazelgrove. Here. Steve Anderson, Hillendale. Here. William Gifford, Hillendale. Here. Michael Berman from the Main Street, excused. Bill, Dani uh, Bill Daniels, McLaughlin. Alice Watts, McLaughlin. Here. John Lewis from Public Works. Here. Tom Guild from Park Place. Steve. I'm sorry. He uh, called me and told me he was going to be able to make it. Okay. Thank you. Who called? Tom. Tom called Kathy. Uh, Steve Van Haverbeek from Here. Park Place. Here. And Bruce Danielson from Rivercrest. Patty Brown, Rivercrest. And ma'am, your name, please. Huh? Your name, please. What's your name? Eileen Olson. Eileen I just signed Olson. up. She okay. signed in. Thank you, Eileen. Irene. No, Irene. Eileen. Eileen. <laughs> Eileen. Sorry. Ingra Rickenbach from Here. South End. Here. David Rickenbach, South End. Here. Steve Tame, Tower Vista. And Amy Wilhite is excused. All. Okay, our first Oops. and uh, other guests yes. in the audience. Other guests in the audience, could you please identify yourself? My name is Brent Rowe. I'm working on behalf of Burns and Olson here to discuss the Metro Transfer Station Project Relocation Number 205. Okay. Tim Smith with ODOT. Hi, Tim. Hi. Kimberly with ODOT. Hi, Tim. Hi, Kimberly. <coughs> I thought we saw a commissioner through here a second ago. Uh, uh, Carol Polly. Uh, Hi, Carol. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, our first agenda. Our first. Um, we got we Randy have a few and more Ed. people. Where, what happened to Ed? Where's Randy? Randy Tyler. Sorry, Randy. This is my first time. Have you noticed? The gentleman in the far back, also. Yeah. I know him. The purple shirt. Oh, I don't. Not see over him. here. Over that way. Over there. I'm Bob Lasalle. Behind you. Hi, Bob. How are you? Can't see <laughs> either. And behind Bob? And behind Mike Mitchell. I live in a coffee neighborhood. You do. So do I. Okay. <coughs> Here's now. The we're looking for. Okay. Pardon? You were looking for him. He was missing. Randy and Ed. Yeah, right. Hi, Randy and Ed. <laughs> okay, now we're going to start. So, Brent, could you please come forward? And we would like to talk about your rezoning application. Yeah, my name is Brent Grove. And uh, by the way, you have 10 minutes? Yeah, I have 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. My name is Brent Grove. We've already established that name earlier. I just wanted to reiterate that. I'm with Burns and uh, Olson over on 212 as you head out to Mount Hood from 205. Um, this is in regards to the Metro Recycling Zone and re Rezoning and Relocation um, over here in the Oregon City Tri City area. Tri City area. Um, and I'm just going to give you a little brief history and present and future and start from there. Uh, I'll try to make this uh, short um, and to the point. Uh, my initial contact was with Metro Recycling probably uh, close to a year ago. Paul Inger is my lead on that. He's the director of solid waste operations over in the Metro Recycling Portland area. Uh, we've had three really important meetings since that time, uh, minimal conversations, but three very important since that time, discussing variations of the deal. Um, Paul has given me a tour of, north, of the Northwest Recycling Center. I've also frequented the Oregon City South, Metro South, on my own accord, um, and have done that on my own time. Um, Metro, basically, they take all of their waste uh, you know, the hard, you know, hard trash items to walk to California and they take 
their waste products, which would be this, um, which would be food products, things that are biodegradable in a shorter term, goes to Washington. Um, he showed me the facility. All of the uh, trash is compacted into a small cube, fit into a truck, and it's a really, you know, really state of the art, really state of the art, high performance machine that uh, condenses all this material waste into uh, a compa compacted component. Um, from we're basically targeting a 10 acre space, um, 10 to 20 acre space. That's really limited around the area. Um, I've, we started out with this. I went to the GIS, which is over in Clackamas County. I started with this. And I went there, I went to the mapping system. We sort of figured out what we wanted to scale. I wanted to scale that area in the existing surrounding periphery. I took that, they blew it to scale. I've pretty much driven a lot of that area that you see right there and have knocked, you know, knocked it down to probably 10 sites that I could foresee the, foresee the uh, space being suitable for metro recycling. Um, I, from those spaces, I've talked to, you know, Terry Emmert, he owns a lot of land around this area, over on 212. You know, I've talked to, uh, you know, I, I've, I've spoken to, you know, Portland Road and Driveway. I've talked to, you know, multiple brokers in the area. There's some hundred piece, there's a hundred piece acre up towards the Happy Valley area. That's a long shot away, you know, as far in the distance. So, you know, owner of Scapoose Sand and Gravel, Scott Parker, he owns a piece over by Home Depot. Used to be an old uh, landfill dump site. Um, and you know, this is just to name a few. There's also Oregon Eye Works over by uh, Camp Withacombe. That has max or I think future potential for mass transit. I don't know if it's exactly suitable for uh, waste or dumping. So, and then obviously it's not a for sale piece of land next to uh, the Plaquemine Cove, but see that is. It's the best piece of land uh, we're going to be getting into. Um, so, uh, so I've spoken to all these owners, either I had I've met with them personally or have had multiple conversations on the phone, brokers, etc. Um, and one of the big problems, you know, we sort of came across was NIMBY, and that was also a concern of mine driving to all these locations, you know. Driving, it might seem unnecessary, but really you don't get, you know, a feel for a place until you've actually been there. So that was, that seemed really important to me. Uh, that was really an important piece to me to drive, actually set foot on these pieces of land, get out, see, smell the air, see if it's going to be a disturbance to the surrounding area, see if it's going to be land that's going to, you know, accommodate uh, the surroundings. So. Um, you know, NIMBY was a potential fault on looking at a uh, site, which is, you know, basically not in my backyard. Residents complaining about, you know, traffic, noise, pollution, et cetera. The list, the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, <coughs> NIMBY's also, you know, airports. I applied for, I've spoken to Peter Walters on multiple occasions. I've, you know, spent money already on my own accord, you know, just trying to get an application in the application process. I got the application, I applied for the application, I, you know, have gotten to the point where, uh, gotten to the point where I'm in the rezoning process, drove this last weekend to Bend to speak to the owner of Cherry Holdings. Um, about rezoning their property. Um, basically, I'm basically on limo and trying to get all these properties. What it comes down to is getting all these properties rezoned, getting them rezoned, getting them zoned for metro, and placing metro in that in that piece of on that piece of land. In my heart, there's not a better place for that place to be. Residence is just a you know bogus idea. It's an absolutely bogus idea. You put you're, you're telling me you're going to put residents on a stagnant, a stagnant, high traffic, 
uh, high traffic area next to a sewage treatment plant, that's just absolutely uh, asinine and bogus. Can I ask you, where are you talking about Metro and when you're looking at, when you, we're looking in reference to my uh, flyer that I handed out, you're going to look at one, on, the, on page one, you're looking at the one and two etched in pen that I wrote on there. One and two. One is the existing, two is, two is uh, future, hopefully. Hopeful future. So one existing, two hopeful future. Um, that's basically what I'm going to try to do. And what, just northbound of that, it's going to be in the purple pink, that's going to be highlighted sewage treatment plant. You're going to see that. If you're going to see that parcel lane right there, that's sewage treatment. Number two is where the potential metro would be, and that's going to be just south of that. And then the, the parcels potentially bordering the, the lake or the lagoon, but, you know, I'm still in the process of getting, getting things rezoned, so if there is a sale in the future, we can make the sale. If there's not, then it's not, but this is, uh, you know, in my mind, the best. I mean, you're thinking about all the, I mean, when you're looking at the broad spectrum of things, you're looking at all the remodeling going on in North Portland, you're looking at all the remodeling going on in Moala Avenue, Moala Avenue, you look at the new bridge being built, you look at all the new development going on in Westland, you look at all the new development that's going to, you know, it's coming up, you know, right, it's coming up, you know, in the future, you know, why would you relocate the metro recycling anywhere else, you know, further than where it is right now? Um, so we have one and two. Page two is going to be the second phase of the development. And that would be, you know, right now the metro is right there. They have a development where there would be more, you know, more retail, It'd be retail oriented, you know, more retail oriented. Phase three is going to be the, that's the, that's the empire, that's the empire plan of, of Moal, Oregon City area. That's what, you know, you have the Blue Heron, you have, you know, the city center, you have the Home Depot area, and you also have the Lagoon area as well. And, you know, just to, just to think about it, I mean, I would, I don't know why they don't, they should take the Blue Heron, they should completely scrape the Blue Heron down, and they should turn all that, turn it into either, you know, park was an idea, I've talked to, you know, park was an idea, but, you know, do high rise, or do something that's more, the lower, you know, the lower city needs help, you know, it needs help, you know, you don't want apartments next to the lagoon, you don't want apartments next to high, you know, I-5, you also have Metro, we've discussed, you know, built, I, in, in one of my meetings with uh, Liz Garcia, Liz Garcia, Catherine Spencer. Uh, Liz Garcia, Catherine Spencer, we discussed the seawall. There's been flooding, I believe, it was in 96. That's definitely a concern. So, met with Paul Inger. He said that we would, he would definitely try to engineer a seawall that would prevent any flooding in the future. That was an engineer. You're very, not, close, you're very close to being out of time. Okay, that's not my expertise, but that's just food for thought. Um, that's pretty much all I have. That's pretty much, I mean, we can go. We can break it into a concept map that goes in to eons, but this is just the gist of things. This is just a simple breakdown of what should be done and what needs to be rezoned and why Metro Recycling uh, needs to be there. So I want to thank everybody for attending today and thank you for your time. And I'd also like to thank, uh, give a big thank you to Katie Riggs for setting this up for me okay. and giving me the opportunity to speak. So That's it. Thank you, Katie Riggs. Thank you, everybody. Okay. okay. The next on our agenda. Wait, he five minutes. We have five minutes. Yeah. Q&A. Five minutes Q&A. Okay. Well, five minutes Q&A. Thanks. Yes, I, I will be happy to field any questions that you all may have for this evening. Okay, William. <coughs> A few questions for you, Brad. Yes, anything? Yes. Uh, number one is, is this is this Metro that is working on getting this property rezoned? No, they're not. They are not. This is a, a property that I'm trying to get rezoned for Metro. Metro, <coughs> Metro hasn't really, you know, voiced a strong opinion on what they want, what they don't want. They voiced that they want to move, and they want to, they want to move because because. 
you know, the Home Depot is definitely, a, you know, you have retail, you have clientele that, you know, the smell might be a problem. Excuse also, me. Also, you want so I, um, so I'm wondering, do you own the property? No, no. I'm okay. representing Metro Recycling on buying the property for Metro. For a, I'm setting everything up for potential. I see. This is a potential. Oh, okay. This isn't a guarantee. This is not, you know, written in stone. This is a. This is just to set things up. So if they do want to make that purchase, who wants, everything's who lined it? up and they can make the purchase. If it's not, then we'll go to Happy Valley. Then we'll go down to Canby. Then we'll go to Satan. Then we'll go to, you know. I, I personally like. Who owns that property now? Uh, right now we have Cherry. Uh, good, that's a, these are very good questions. Cherry Holders is an independent owner. It's not owned by a city or county affiliation. Uh, um, yeah, we have, uh, we have we have the Urban Renewal Agency of Oregon. That's David Frasher. I need to talk to David Frasher. Set up a potential a meeting about you know maybe you know just David Frasher for you know in that department. Dan Kemp, Dan Hanninger, uh, and Chair Darlene Hooley, and Commissioner Ed Linquist, Commissioner Julie Hammerstand for uh, uh, for. Uh, that's that's the city. That's the last the last question I had for you, Brent. Was yes, it's a tri city service district. You mentioned uh, an individual named Paul, and I don't. Yeah, know, Paul I, Inger. 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 E, yeah, e e h i n g e r. And who is he? Paul Inger is uh, Paul Inger is the director of solid waste operations for Metro, for Metro Recycling. Okay, thank you. That's yeah. all my questions. Yeah. Tom O'Brien. Yes. Uh, yes. Maybe I missed it, uh, Brent. Uh, but could you go over your qualifications again? Why? Why are my qualifications? Yeah. I'm just a licensed. Bro I'm a licensed broker. Real I'm a licensed. I'm a licensed broker. broker that does consulting on and trying to facilitate the deal for Metro Recycling. A real estate broker. Commercial real estate. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Kathy Hogan. Oh. So. Yes, so Metro down there by the Home Depot, are they wanting to close that totally and move it? Or are they going to have... We have better construction. They have the, uh, they have the loop going up. They're trying to construct the loop to ease, ease traffic. So, you know, eventually down the line, I think the, a dense, a, eventually down the line, the construction there, I don't think it's really going to disrupt it's not really going to disrupt or cut through that property, but it's, the idea is to facilitate more retail in the area. And and I bet, sorry, what, sorry, what did you ask again? So in other words, they would like to close it, but they want yeah, another place to put it. Exactly. Eventually close the facility down, jump it over. I I want to jump that over I-205 and start a new facility, uh, I-205. We've also, you know, I've talked about engineering the new facility. Seattle is, you know, Seattle, the waste, the waste transfer station up in Seattle is sort of a staple and something that you want to, you know, it's sort of an aesthetically pleasing uh, uh, structure that you would want to sort of, you know. So where, where exactly on this map are you talking about putting it? So right here, we're going to go. Where one is. Yeah, sure. So right here, we are right. Uh, we're right here. This is a shopping center right here. Mm -hmm. Right here, we're gonna jump it over to the cove, right on the blue. Oh. So have they thought of how to mitigate any hazardous waste into the cove? We haven't there. Well, the cove was an original. It was an original uh, like yeah. quarry. They originally extracted elements out of that lagoon. So you know, I have talked about maybe filling it back up, doing the more, more development over there, and getting it back to its original state, having the river, you know, right now it's just, you know, I mean, it's all right. So is, is there no other um, piece of property that would facilitate, be a better? What, what do you mean? What do you mean? I mean, the, 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 no, there's not, there's not at all. I mean, Metro Recycling, this, oh, is, this has got Metro Recycling's name right on it. I mean, yeah. it's it already says Metro Recycling, Right there. I mean, if you dig down twenty layers down to maybe molten or molten or the well, mantle, 
you might see metro recycling. I name on think there. what I meant was any other site within Oregon City that would be more appropriate. I'm just asking. No, there's not. Absolutely not. Nothing in nothing up in Upper Malala. Nothing over in Upper Foster. Nothing up in Happy Valley. Nothing over in West Lynn. Nothing. You know how far? I mean. We can go down to Salem and buy property on a, we can go buy farmland on a Salem, but nobody, they're going to go out of business in the near future. I mean, we need, you know, we need something that's going to be, we need something that's going to coincide, coincide to the, to the near, near plan. I mean, okay, thank you. You know, thank you. Okay, Paul. I, I, okay, I'm done. Yeah. Okay, thank I guess you. we're done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Laura Turway, Transportation System Plan Project website. Oh, did that come in? Okay. On the floor. I am Laura Turway with the Planning Department at the City, and I've been working on our Transportation System Plan uh, with Joan Lewis as well and Nancy Crushar. Um, the City is looking at our transportation system and how we get around and we're looking forward to 2035 to see if there are ways that we can get around better. So this <clears throat> includes streets, bike paths, how you get around via transit. It applies to multiple different modes. Um, the purpose of me being here today is just to integrate you to our website so you can see what sort of comments have been submitted so far, how to submit comments regarding our transportation system, and how to see what um, is going on in our project. If you go to the city website, which is www.orcity.org, uh, from the city homepage, you can link to our project a couple different ways. Um, this top banner has an article that goes through a cycle of five different features, and we're one of these features. Um, this is our logo for the TSP. Uh, you can also go to our public works department and get to our project that way as well. Um, usually we're one of the top stories um, on the city homepage. So if you go to the project website, which is www.octransportationplan.org, this is what you'll find. Can you guys see that okay? That text is pretty small. Yep. All right. We're making it. So this is our city, or this is the project homepage, and the purpose of our project is to get everyone's point of view from this. Yes. Would you do a control plus, please? Sure. Control plus. There you go. The Perfect. tricks you learn every day. Thank you. <laughs> um, so with this project, we want to get as much public input as possible. We started this project early last July and it will extend through spring of next year and during this project time length we want to figure out where there are places that we can make our transportation system better so in order to do that it takes the whole city's input um, all of us have different experiences and we want to figure out specifically where there's a place where you can see another side of the pathway you just can't quite get there or there's an intersection that's been really irritating to you or the sight distance isn't so great or you really wish there was a bus stop closer to your home or maybe you own a business and there's large freight trucks and the freight trucks have difficulty at certain intersections or something like that mm -hmm. so how can we get around our city better so with this project website um, all of our documents are online. We would like to be as transparent as possible. As soon as we create a document, it will go onto our city website where anyone can comment on it. Um, this is the About tab is a brief description of the website. It tells us why we're updating the transportation system plan. Transportation system plan was adopted in 2001 and it's supposed to look forward into the future, so how we can improve things in the future. And since 2001, we need to comply with a couple new requirements that have come into place, and we want to look ahead to 2035. So as we grow as a city, where are some intersections that might be problematic that maybe aren't problematic right now? 
Um, our project objectives are listed on the website. The process for updating the TSP is broken down into 12 manageable sections or technical memorandums. This point in the project, we're at memo number 10. So that starts out with what are our requirements? So what are our parameters that we have to abide by? Where is our current policy um, code requirements, TSP? Where are places that we need to improve? Where are gaps and deficiencies in our system? And it sort of moves through that lineal line. Um, also on the about page, it has our project completion time. Our project area extends to all land within our urban growth boundary, so it does include concept plan areas. There's been a couple of concept plans that have been completed um, recently or still going through the process, and then also the South End concept plan, which will start soon. Um, so those are the existing ones that have been completed. will be integrated into our project. Um, our budget is on here. We received a grant from ODOT for a majority of the project, and then the city put in $30,000 as well. Um, the city has uh, our lead consultant is DKS and Associates, and then they have a group of subconsultants as well. Our next tab on the city homepage is our draft document. So this is what we've come up with so far. You can look at all the tech memos or the memos. Um, we've summarized important issues. So if you don't want to read the whole document, maybe there's specific items that we think you should pay attention to, or just summarizing the whole document, you can click on the summary and read that. Um, all of our documents, again, are up to date on this website. Um, if you want to read the documents, give us your comments. You can submit your comments on the bottom of the page. This is like a blog type format, so you can ask a question at the bottom you can email me a question and I'll post it on here for you as well. Um, all questions that come in about the project are all posted directly to our website and then there's answers that get posted to our website as well. So you can read what other people are asking and then what our responses to those questions are. Um, and just one thing to note, at the bottom we have the acronyms and abbreviations. I think that's kind of helpful if you haven't read uh, too many of these before. E-I-E-I-O stand for. Yes, so you can t open up the document, write your comments on the document. If you want, send it to me. You can also upload those comments directly to our website as well. Um, we do have a news feature, um, which will post periodic articles about what's going on with the project. We have a question of the month. Um, the June question of the month asks, if we should concentrate money on larger, fewer projects or smaller, more multiple projects. Um, so the question of the month for July is about to come out. It's going to be a survey about how we rate our goals and objectives. From those goals and objectives, we get our criteria for how we're gonna rank projects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a Get Involved tab, and listed on the top of the Get Involved tab, <clears throat> is a link to our interactive map. There's also a link to our interactive map on our home page as well. Um, you can also post questions here if you'd like. If you were to click on our interactive map link, it will take you to a place where you can submit comments, you can agree or disagree with other people's comments, you can comment on other people's comments, you can look and see what type of comments have been submitted so far. Um, it kind of filters them just for the view, so you don't see all the comments on this page. You can filter for all the bike comments, different things like that. There's a total of 131 comments that have been submitted so far on this website. Um, if you were to take a look, let's see, that's <coughs> Control Plus. Such a nice tool. If you were to take a look at the comments, you can click on them directly on the interactive map. So if I'm to click on this one, I can thumbs up or thumbs down, agree with that comment. If I want to see what it says, I can click on it there. And this particular comment um, is about someone who is noting that there are drivers that don't stop at crosswalks. Um, and maybe there's something in our project or something the city in general can do about that. We, the project team has posted a response 
um, to this comment indicating that we're going to be adding more rider signage or those little signs that say under their crosswalk that say this is a law, you have to stop for the crosswalk. Um, so it is a good place to see feedback. There's not a feedback for every single comment at this time, but we're working on getting responses to all those comments there as soon as possible. Um, so if I wanted to post a comment and, and agree or disagree, I can do that here. Um, also at the bottom of the comment page, you can just read through all the comments and people's responses as well at the bottom here. It's been a really nice resource for us and <coughs> though our project may not be directly related to a lot of these comments, at least we can take these comments and forward them to departments who are responsible. For example, there's some comments on signal timing near highway on, on 213 near Malala. And sometimes the okay, timing good, isn't yes. great there. And that's not something that would be in the TSP, but we could at least take that comment and forward it to the appropriate person so they can look at that signal timing. Um, so it is a good place if you have any transportation related comments to let us know. Um, as a part of our project, we're looking again at where we can integrate new trails, bus, auto, Ooh. freight, car, any sort of way you get around the city and how we can get around the city better is appreciated. Uh, we want to make sure that we really do get a lot of public involvement. We strive to go to a lot of meetings and so forth um, to make sure that we get a wide point of view and we really get all of those um, items that we need. Uh, we need to cut you short, sure. but I would like to invite you to the next Caulfield meeting. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got some questions and answers, but uh, That's I would like the to get presentation yeah. the presentation for the item. When is yes, sir. Tom O'Brien. Tom O'Brien. I mean, Steve Anderson. Anderson. You know your name. <laughs> Just a couple of comments. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't mind being called Tom. That's great. Right. <laughs> if, you, if you guys haven't first noticed, off, I'm nervous tonight with this. <laughs> first off, Control Plus. Yeah. The older you get, the more you understand these <laughs> neat tools. Yes. I discovered that about two years ago. <laughs> Perfect. It is. Number two, uh, I just want to go on by saying this is another really great way that our city is encouraging interactivity. Yes, it's very good. And uh, affordable. And this, I'm having, uh, I'm hosting our neighborhood association tomorrow evening, and I'm def definitely going to mention uh, this part of the website, the city's website where they can actually go to and see what's happening right now and also make comments on things that are going to happen in the future. There's flyers in the back, too, that okay. have the project website on there. And the next person to speak is Tom O'Brien. Laura, I want to thank you and the whole TSP team for the nice job you've done on the website. I was looking at it the other day, and it just it's very intuitive, so even people in my age group <laughs> are comfortable using it and giving their input, and I think that's critical. Thank you. It's uh, good to hear. We don't use computers real well. But <laughs> <laughs> and we don't see so well either. That's the, that's the problem we're having tonight. <laughs> that's, that's what the Control Plus is all about. It's <laughs> great. These are better. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy Hogan. Okay. What I understand you saying at this website, on the concept plan on like Holly Lane and Maple Lane and Beaver Creek Road, you already have the concept plan, and that would be on that website. <coughs> um, it has to be no. in the urban growth boundary. Uh, yeah, we're only working on the urban growth boundary, so which Holly Lane part of it is. Um, well, some of those places ha are within, you know. We took the content of those concept plans, the Park Place and the Beaver Creek Road, and we integrated them into there. As you know, there's a large public process to make those concept plans, and they came with general locations of streets and zonings and different types like... But they can research that, like South End, when it's always going around. When South End comes up, then... Those plans are both available on the site. That will be on the site, too, then, Are you because you haven't done that yet. South End's the only one that's not done, so we yeah. have three concept plan areas. Two are done. Um, South End's the one that is just getting started. Okay. They will have a website that's similar to this. You cannot link to South End from our website because it doesn't exist yet, but you can link to it from the city homepage once it okay. does get going. Okay, thank you. 
Paul Edgar, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm on the Clackamas County TSP plan group, too. So I just want to tell you, I wish we had for Clackamas County this, uh, this is so much better than what we're dealing with for the whole of Clackamas County. You could the, the city uh, should be complimented because you're way ahead of uh, the curve on this. And, uh, and, I, and I, to me, it was just a thank you because I look at it and I'm th shaking my head about all of Clackamas County not being at the same level as Oregon City. Thank you. Very nice presentation. Oops, John Lewis. John Lewis. How did you come up there? I just I just tricked you. Oh, you did good. <laughs> so I just wanted to mention that, you know, there's a couple of different stakeholder advisory groups as well. We have stakeholder advisory group meetings pretty regularly. We're not sure when the next ones are, but it's going to be probably August, right? Yeah, and they get posted on our website. The last link will have upcoming meetings. And we had a open house last month. Um, not not a lot of people showed up for that, but it was a nice evening, so I kind of get that. We've had out. we've had two. Our last one was about a week ago, and um, I, I guess the other thing is all these comments. Right now, there's a process underway to respond to those comments. So we've been collecting comments for a couple months now, and I've heard from some that, well, I made my comments, but nobody has gotten back to me. But that plan is to do that. So there's like 130 comments on this website right now, and some of them are fairly lengthy and require a fair amount of time to kind of formulate responses to. So um, I know on the Jug Handle Project, the, those comments uh, are, and that feedback came back pretty quickly we're going to try to get on track with this one too so it's definitely is a good tool and it provides like you said good insight for uh, departments other than those that are working on the TSP if there's a problem so thank you thank you Laura thank you very much <laughs> Our next speakers are Randy Taylor and Ed Darrow. Randy Tyler. Tyler. Change names. I can't see. Would you give me a break? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Cove Project. It's on the screen. I can't see it on there either. Here. Uh, maybe. <laughs> These work fairly good. You're kidding. No, I can't. Oh, that does work. Thank you. I take them? I'll give them back to you after the meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can It works. <laughs> Not ashamed of it. <laughs> does that mean I'm blind? <laughs> yeah, I think it does, Kathy. Yeah, I think it does. Time's almost up, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Just for the record, Randy, I can see your name now. <laughs> Okay. I've got my dollar stores ones on. You take good care of those. Katie will do it. Yeah, yeah, that's not my job. Good evening, ZIC commissioners. Uh, it's been a while since we've been before you. Not commissioners, representatives. Representatives. All right. All right. Uh, actually, it was about a year ago, I think, the last yeah. time we had an opportunity to meet with you. And we'd like to give kind of an update on what's been going on. And um, Ed, do you want to take it away? Well, let me just say uh, first, we've specialized in developing waterfront properties. And the first part of this presentation will show you some of those properties that we've developed. We've learned a lot in developing waterfront properties. And um, a lot of that is very valuable when it comes to working our way through the, the puzzle. Going to this uh, kind of a summary level, uh, five years we've been working on the project. Uh, we were originally uh, chosen by the city to work on this piece of property. Uh, and the statement was, it's your nickel. If you can figure it out, then we'll see if we can do it. So mm -hmm. to this date, we've spent uh, over $8 million on the project. Uh, it's been defined and redefined. Uh, we've had 18 outreach uh, meetings with different groups like yourself. We've listened to those groups and we've incorporated a lot of those concepts. So uh, as Randy said, we had a little background program here on projects which we have done. 
One of our uh, primary goals here is to create the new jobs, which will be primarily at the outset construction. Uh, our first uh, couple of phases are almost $80 million worth of construction. Uh, and if, in fact, we are doing uh, office complements in part of that, uh, there will be uh, new jobs as uh, uh, consistent jobs that will be in the future. The uh, parks and recreation part of it that we're doing, uh, uh, we'll show you that as we get into the drawings. Uh, and one of the main things is to take the environment that's there now and enhance it. Uh, there was a suggestion that maybe you just fill up that hole that's there. Uh, our approach to projects like this is to take the natural environment that's there, work with it, create something new, but don't take and destroy it and don't take it away. Uh, the uh, sustainable practices, uh, Randy is the sustainable guy here. Uh, you had some comments on that? Oh, we, we are doing uh, low impact development, it's LID, and it has a lot to do with how you treat stormwater and how you deal with erosion control. And there are certain technologies in terms of grass line swells or uh, dispersal uh, systems that spread, uh, gather the water, slow it down so it can go through a biofiltration process with the goal of having it be clean, cleaner than it was and, and make sure that you have the water quality for the long run. Our last two meetings in front of the uh, city, we did get unanimous approvals to move forward and since that time, which was probably six months ago, we've spent another $800,000 redefining and finalizing uh, engineering uh, drawings and upgrading our uh, past concepts to uh, be compatible with what the city has requested, which was primarily that if in fact there's going to be a, a substantial investment, uh, can our first increment of construction cover that uh, cost in terms of the uh, taxes that will be paid? And that's what we've been working for probably the last six months with the city on, and that's what you'll see in this uh, presentation. Uh, just a, a quickie on a few projects where we've been on the water. This is out in Beaverton. <coughs> we uh, defined this as the lakes. It was a small uh, uh, area of body of water which we worked with uh, helped enhance it and created an origin where the uh, units would actually look over that. Uh, another larger project uh, which was the old Portland cement plant, we bought that, uh, we tore it down. Uh, this is over 20 years ago. We uh, were able to recapture $500,000 worth of the steel out of that teardown. We took all the concrete, we crushed it with a big two-story crusher and used that for the road base throughout the project. So we were doing recycling a long time ago, and it, it was a natural opportunity, uh, and it, uh, it didn't take any scientific approach. It just was there. Let's save it. Let's use it. Uh, there's the old Portland cement plant. Uniquely, there was five different uh, companies in the country that actually tear down cement plants, and when they came in, they actually dynamited those big silos that you can see there. Uh, and made them fall over and knock the other ones over. So it was kind of a unique deal. Uh, the water uh, elements that were in this, the city said, well, you know, maybe you ought to take those big giant concrete dolphins uh, that are out there. And I don't know if I have a pointer here or not on this guy. Is there a pointer? I don't see it. Uh, but you can see those things that are sitting out in the water. They're called the concrete dolphins, gravity dolphins. The mm -hmm. barges used to pull up there. And we said, my gosh, you know, we're in the water. These we, things? Yes. Yeah, we might not be able to get back in the water with the core, uh, with the uh, different entities that would uh, do that. So let's let's work with it. So those three that are on the left side there that uh, that uh, were just pointed to, we were able to build a water sports center for the city. Three high schools currently use that <coughs> for uh, rowing. So it was a nice give back. The, in that particular case, the city was our partner, as uh, you are here. Uh, they actually contributed a very substantial amount of funds to the project, uh, <coughs> contributed and granted to us seven acres of the property, which was in this zone right here where we built uh, offices, a restaurant, and we created a 2,000-foot uh, pathway across here. Uh, so it was a good public-private approach. This uh, spot right here was an old... Uh, uh, elevator uh, program for bringing raw materials in. We take, uh, took and redid that and made that into an amphitheater. And uh, on Wednesday nights in Lake Oswego, it's a very major uh, you know, program. So it worked out very well. It was about a $71 million project. And 
one of our main things is the Water Sports Center we put in the new path systems and we preserved all these trees. We actually put in $348,000 worth of trees uh, on the project. Uh, that was just the cost of the trees alone. We planted over a thousand new trees and they were big trees. When we did this project, the city actually invited us to do this project. They said there's a buyer uh, looking at this and a seller looking at selling. And they said if we work with the city and continue the pass system across there, that they would work with us on this project. So that's 32 high-end condos that uh, went from 300000 to $2.5 million. Uh, we put the uh, pathway in for the city, and then the city came along and asked us to do the next piece of property. <laughs> Uh, it was for sale for a million seventy-five, and I went before the city council. I said, "We'll put up seventy-five if you'll put up a million. They did. We designed it to get approved, got the pathway for the uh, city, and then ultimately we did not build it. We sold it to another party. That's that project sitting on the water. The Tidewater Cove is another waterfront project." And I'm just going to swing through this real quickly. It's a large project, uh, condos on the water, uh, offices. It's very similar to what we're doing now, very successful. These are the buildings that were there. They're three stories. Part of the buildings we're talking about at the Cove are four stories, but they have a, a lot of the same uh, architectural vocabulary. Uh, There's a 100-acre parcel on the coast. Uh, we built out uh, 65 condominiums on the water, uh, 100 cottages. We saved 35 acres of wetlands uh, and enhanced that. And we're to the cove. Uh, as you know, we have six buildings across the waterfront. Uh, those six buildings have 34 <coughs> units uh, per building for a total of 204 units. That would be phase 1A. Phase 1B are the garden apartments over here. There's 254 of those. We'll build 96 of those together with these 204 for a total of 300 units at phase one. Ultimately coming back, uh, we have the office and a potential for a hotel zoned in this area and the same thing in this area. Our first phase, uh, 1A, 1B, would be almost $80 million. That's what we're scheduling to uh, start construction on. Uh, 52, almost 53 million dollars. When we come in, uh, totally we'll have about 113 million dollars. And when we convert these waterfront units to condos, it'll add probably another 20 to 30 million dollars. So for the 10 million dollars which the city has uh, committed to, uh, 3 million has been expended, 7 million is, is the next uh, increment of, uh, of cost, which is the infrastructure. We're getting about a 10 to 12 times the investment the city is putting in is coming back. Uh, in Lake Oswego, the very first phase of that project, the city was able to borrow 4.6 million and start the downtown redevelopment of Lake Oswego. So it's a very similar type approach here. A lot of uh, unique opportunities for the public, just as a hotel uh, or as an office. We've designed in, as requested by the city, within the last six months, a new trailhead system here, which is parking, which gets you right onto the path. We, uh, we don't have design uh, for the marinas yet, but that's a potential in the future. Then we come down and we have the new residence, which is the 254 apartments, and the 204 waterfront units, which potentially would be uh, condominiums in the future. We'll be totally redoing Agnes all new streetscape, all new landscaping. Where this bluff right now drops off vertically, it'll be uh, pushed back to a three to one. And we've worked with the city and, and come back with a um, whole preservation of several clumps of the trees that are there now, which wasn't part of the original plan. This is a little section that just shows <coughs> that esplanade then coming down and the way we're saving some of the trees. Uh, so it's a, it's a a very unique process that we did uh, probably five months ago, four months ago with the city. The six buildings, as I mentioned. An elevation that's similar to what we did uh, over at Tidewater Cove. Those are all single loaded so that when you uh, move into one of these units, there is not somebody on this side, it's just on the water side. So they're mm -hmm. totally uh, all oriented toward the water. Private entrance, security. This is the Tidewater Cove, and just to get you a feel of what is actually built. 
and this is the esplanade that will go down. This is the north end, and right here would be the little water sports center for the kids. And looking at the site plan again, this is the 204, uh, uh, 254 apartments, potential for office and or um, hotel. Same picture from the other side. This is the mixed-use building, which is over on the peninsula, which has the potential for being a hotel. And it has the ability to have two restaurants within that complement. And one of the things, as I mentioned, that we did at uh, Lake Oswego, we created a water sports center, which was really for the kids to learn water safety and to be able to get into the water and the potential for the marinas. The small amphitheater that we'd be doing in the North Park uh, would be a venue for any number of programs. And then we have a drawing which we have done for us, a potentially a small inn, which could be in either location. Is that a Jolly Roger flag up there? It is. Yeah. I, put, I put that in there. Did you like that? <laughs> Not many people noticed that. <laughs> Will you? You know me and flags. The flag man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So our intent is to create new jobs, and it obviously we will be increasing the tax base and uh, creating a whole new recreational opportunity. And in the course of doing that, we'll be enhancing the habitat and uh, all of the surrounding property. So we're open for questions, if there's any questions. When are people going to dump their trash? <laughs> in their garbage can. <laughs> and then it'll be hauled off to your new spot. You're wrong. <laughs> let's don't okay. uh, you had your time so please let's go on here with what we're doing Paul, Paul, Paul. Paul Edgar please Randy Ed thank you very much for coming in been interested uh, as to what uh, where where we were um, have you guys come up with any long-term identification on dredging uh, right now we know that the mouth of the cove really uh, the rock for uh, the rocks that uh, get washed down uh, have it to a point where it's marginalized most of the year, making it impossible for it to be uh, this area to be a marina without without a, a, a permanent sustainable dredging plan. Uh, can you uh, elaborate a little bit on what your vision is for how we put together a dredging plan that's sustainable to keep this an open waterway and make it a viable for navigational purposes? Well, one of the things that we talked about was that um, basically with the, the combination of things that are going on there, the river, both rivers actually going up and down, the tidal influence, um, it's not really possible to predict with any certainty when a big event might happen. Um, so we don't know if we, if we did the dredging, we have it, it's all fully permitted, um, well, it's permitted right now to, to yes, be direct. That's correct, right. And um, the, uh, the thing that we've talked about is since it's, it's, there's no way of knowing what the frequency might be, so you can't predict how frequent a 100-year flood is going to be, but we can um, set aside a certain amount of money annually and maybe through a, a local improvement district uh, I guess there's a variety of ways that could be done, but so that over the years the money would pile up, and then hopefully, if you if you have an event that needs to be redredged, you've got some funding to do it. Initially, are you going to be participating or, or leading the pack as far as coming up with a plan to uh, within your development to have it dredged? Because right now it's it's not uh, navigable. We have. Um bid out the infrastructure plans, which are probably 98% complete in terms of all the engineering for the site. Uh, and in doing that, uh, the bids were down to about 6.4 up to 7.3, I believe, with the, the But bids. does that include dredging? Uh, if we were able to bring that in at the lower level, there would be substantial funds there that would allow us to do that. And we've talked uh, with the city that if we can create enough of a, uh, a pad there, uh, that we could actually be able to incorporate that into the first round of our construction. Uh, after that, uh, it will be a function of saying, what is that extraordinary event like Randy's talking about, and how do we actually cover that? Uh, the, uh, <coughs> the intent would be to, uh, you know, actually 
go out and dredge it whenever we have to to keep navigable uh, approach there. But right now we had bids at I think what one hundred and seventy thousand dollars. It's not a major to, amount to dredge it. To dredge it, it's not a major amount of funds. So potentially we could actually uh, set aside funds out of our uh, our operations to do something like that. Uh, for a lot of people, the the water was declared by the Coast Guard as Section Ten water now, and Section Ten makes it uh, um, in a sense. It seeds across ownership of the water and puts the water itself into the control of the Coast Guard uh, in a manner that it wasn't before. It was considered fresh water uh, and controlled under the Fresh Water Act. And so uh, it does now have a historic uh, and uh, uh, adjudication by uh, the Coast Guard as uh, Section 10 water. So that's something relatively knew when we originally started this process of looking at the cove and ordinary high water marks and things like this that was not the case but now it is just thank you so much for your research into the Paul. it was very informative tom o'brien yeah i have two questions and then a comment and so i'll share the questions let's start with uh, ed uh, i have visited on multiple occasions both tidewater cove and oswego point if you were to make a judgment call on what the cove is going to represent or be closer to, which of those two developments do you see the cove being most like? Well, I think the, the real benefit that uh, we've found in doing those projects was creating the public uh, access to the waterfront. And a lot of times when uh, developers do projects, they want to you know, uh, cloister it and keep it for the people that are buying units or renting units. And we've done exactly the opposite on every project uh, that we've had a waterfront approach. We've invited the public into it, and in both of those projects, those are major, uh, major uh, items that are used. Uh, the trail system, which is existing now at the Cove, has a high frequency now, of use. Uh, please, uh, the question I asked was, if you were to compare Tidewater Cove to the Cove, and Oswego Point to the Cove. Which one are we looking at here in Oregon City? Well, I'd say that uh, it most likely would be more like uh, Oswego Point. And the primary reason for that is the opportunity to do have the existing vegetation and new vegetation that will be coming from the pathway. Thank you. Uh, yes. I have public access to the Cove right now, so you know that the, the, the other direction you were going uh, doesn't help me any. Uh, I would like to ask a tough question for Randy. Uh, it seems to me, and I've made comments at various meetings over the years, that this whole project has been in limbo, and it reminds me very much of Beaverton Round. I know financing has been difficult for your organization in these tough financial times. Can you explain to us where are you currently relative to financing for this project? Ed is a money guy, so let him respond. Yeah, I, uh, I, I Sorry to ask too tough a question. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's a very good question. Uh, if you recall, originally we had brought to, to the table SunWest uh, Development, uh, which is a retirement entity. Uh, before they went bankrupt, we could see that they weren't uh, really making it, so uh, we bought them out of the project. Uh, after that, Sladen uh, Construction came into the project, and I think Todd Woodley has been before this group, who is one of the principals of that entity, uh, was a, a, a participant in it. So uh, he actually decided independently that he did not want to move forward, that not because of the project, just for some personal reasons, and I think I actually came to the, the uh, city council and uh, stated that. So we said that we will pick up the, the banner and run with it, which we have done for the last year. Uh, we've made the commitment both financially and time-wise to carry it on. And one of the big things that the city uh, was concerned with was, are you going to build enough uh, increment in the first round to, in fact, support our making the next commitment, which is the $7 million? So we've done probably four different iterations on that uh, with staff uh, and back and forth with the city council, and we finally ended up with a position under an executive meeting with the uh, City Council, the Urban Renewal Commission, said that they would in fact 
endorse moving forward with a new development agreement. So that was supposed to have been delivered to us either Friday or today. I didn't get it today, uh, but it has been done by the city. So when we have that in hand, uh, that will be our next round, and then we will bring the financing to the table. Until you have that document, we really haven't had anything to present to a formal uh, institution. So right now it's self-financed? It is, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Is that okay? Mm. Uh, I was no, hold up, please. We have people in front of you. I had another. I had another comment, and I, I had made comments earlier about your wonderful artwork, and the beautiful sailboats, those thirty-five footers, thirty-six footers, out there in the cove, as well as the sternwheeler. I noticed tonight there were very few sailboats. I didn't see a sternwheeler at all, but I did notice on your opening slide you had a great big schooner. <coughs> Will the schooner be present at the cove? <laughs> Uh, actually, those were 35 footers. The, the intent was uh, for part of the uh, the kids program is to have the smaller sailboats that they could learn. It was just a follow it's, up on the gravel. It would park. be extraordinary, <laughs> uh, and I have been a sailor for a long time with large boats, so it's. Uh, uh, I think the maybe kids are a little bit than what the code will allow. <laughs> <laughs> we did actually try. Uh, the, we we met with the uh, what was the stern wheeler guy. Uh, yeah, the Rose. The Rose, uh, and we talked about potentially buying that and bringing it in as a marketing type uh, 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 use for the kids, uh, and we weren't able to work that out. So it, uh, there was this potential that something like that could be there, not running back and forth, but actually be in the code. Thank you. Yes. Are you at all concerned about abandonment? Excuse from me. The Excuse up me. Max Transit and the freeway and the sewage. You're not going to talk it out of turn. Do you understand? Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Kathy Hogan, please. Okay. I have a few questions, too. First, is there any way to get a, do you have a copy? Is that going to be on your website? Do you have a website that we could see what your plan is and study uh, it? We can certainly uh, email it to you. We can get emails and we can send it to you. We don't have a website for the program. Well, we have maybe email it to Katie. Could you yeah, email it to Katie and have her email it to those that are interested, which certainly. I am? Okay. Okay. All right. I'm not. Done. I got a few more questions. Uh, on the waterway, once this is built, if it's built, who is going to keep that and pay for keeping that um, cove water open? Does the public have to pay for the cove for the rest of their life to keep the waterway? Um, yes, that's what uh, Paul uh, was addressing. Uh, supposedly, we understand from. Uh, uh, some engineering uh, people that it, uh, the water is replaced every seven days by a combination of the tidal movement and just the uh, clackamas going by. So the intent is you know, there is a, a substantial migration of water that comes in from the peninsula side. It just filters in. Uh, it is a nice body of water. We've had it tested. There are no. Uh, but there's. I think this has been ten minutes. I had ten minutes. We all are equals. Why do they get to speak longer than me? I, we're going to ask you to leave in just about a moment. We will let you speak, but if you I'm, I'm not finished with my questions. You let her finish, okay? Okay. What I'm asking, though, is there's a lot of gravel <coughs> that's closing slowly, and it keep, it's going to be have to be reopened constantly to get rid of the filtration of the gravel that keeps coming from upriver, and it comes down. So how are they going to pay for it? Are they going to come to the, the public every time? Is there going to be an entity? Are the people that live in those condos and townhouses and apartments, are they going to be have like a homeowners association to pay for it? Well, that is one of the concepts that we have. It is not well defined at this point exactly how it will be done. The intent is to uh, open it up uh, at the outset. Uh, we have looked at the idea of if there isn't a marina, will the water sustain itself, which is the filtration, and we understand that it would. So there's a potential that you could lose the navigable part of it, which would mean you wouldn't have a marina, uh, but you'd still have a very viable body of water. Okay. Then, and then, in totality, what is the urban renewal money that is going to be eventually costing the public out of their property taxes? Uh, Nothing out of the property taxes. The, uh, come, the urban renewal is paid through the property taxes. Yes, and the property taxes that will be generated from this project will pay back any money that is in fact put up. 
That was one of the But if it isn't, how much in totality is it going to be? The commitment is was for $10 million. There has been expended $3 million. There's an additional $7 million, which is for the uh, infrastructure. And when you look at it and you say, well, you know, as a developer, are we getting a grant that is money in our pocket? It's not. The property does not is not buildable. The seven million dollars is to take and move 250,000 yards of dirt, create the area that would actually be built on, and create enough increment, 113 million dollars, so that it will not only pay back the 10 million, it will actually create additional increment and additional funds the city can use in other parts of the city. Well, I'm just, it's going to be in uh, my great-grandchildren's lifetime, and they're born now, some of them. Because no, that's a lot of money coming out of the property tax taken away from the schools and stuff. Yeah, I think this is there going to be a guarantee that this is going to be able to pay it? The well, there isn't a guarantee, but the amount of uh, commitment that is going into the project has the benefit of the taxes, and those taxes are at uh, day one of finished phase one is paying 116% of the cost of the ten million dollars. Okay, Kathy, I'm going to cut you off. We're, That's fine. we're way into our time with this. So. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to discontinue this discussion to move on with our meeting. Thank you very much. Indeed. For coming. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and next is uh, own up staff. Okay, what's the name? <laughs> Tim Smith and Kim Didwitty. Did, did I get it? You got it. All right. Very See, good. these glasses good. are good. <laughs> See, I was afraid to cut uh, Kathy off because I've got her glasses and I'm going to take them back. You're going to pay for a new set if you break them, that's for sure. I promise you. It's quite all right. There you go. Well, thank you for allowing Kimberly and I to uh, be here tonight with you, and uh, we're here to share a little bit about the upcoming 99E highway uh, paving project that we're going to do between Oregon City and Canby. And uh, we're going to be starting that work uh, beginning this uh, Thursday night uh, with some of the grinding and paving. Uh, previously, we've had some open house meetings that uh, we've shared information. Mailers have gone out to city residences and and uh, Kimberly and others have done a great job to get the word out, but we just wanted to, we were asked to come back and share a little bit as we got closer to construction, really, uh, what, what that construction is going to entail. Uh, my position on the project there is to oversee the actually the on-site work with the inspectors that work for me directly. Um, I'm currently working on the Oregon City Arch Bridge here and uh, working with the uh, uh, City of Oregon City on that, and uh, but uh, overseeing the uh, project there on the Arch Bridge as well. So this this new 99E project anyway is uh, consists primarily of a paving project. It's a preservation project, so it's all about just preserving the asphalt and preserving the road surface that uh, that we all drive on now between Oregon City and Canby. What that's going to consist of, uh, really, maybe I'll start with the limits of the project. The north limit is going to be at 10th Street. The south limit is going to be uh, at Territorial Road in Canby. And that's in the back of this handout. Yes, oh, uh, there's a handout there that shows some of the information. There is a small area, a um, little over a mile section that we paved about three years ago, uh, just south of Kanema. And uh, we'll, be, we'll tie into that section of the project and then skip skip over that area that we paved about three years ago. Starting at 10th Street though, we're going to uh, be grinding and paving, as I said earlier, starting this Thursday Thursday night. And uh, one of the things we're going to try and do within the Oregon City area between 10th Street and uh, the, the tunnel is to try and get out of the Oregon City area as quickly as possible. And uh, we've heard from the city, we've heard from the businesses in the area, and we know there's impacts with all the projects that are going on right now in the city of Oregon City. So we've gone beyond what uh, really the contract, the way it's set up right now, and, and asked our contractor to delay some of their work in the early evening to allow some of the downtown businesses to maintain business hours up till about 9 o'clock at night. So we're not going to really start most of our work uh, on, on the Monday through Fridays until after about 9 o'clock at night. However, we have some very difficult work coming up right off the bat. That's this weekend where we're going to be working 
between 10th Street and the tunnel. And we're, we're going to start off grinding the asphalt off. And then we have two structures in that area. You may or may not know that, uh, but there's a half viaduct, meaning a half structure. Then, then there's a full width structure as well. And in order to preserve the, the structure, we have to do what's called a waterproof membrane. We grind the asphalt off, clean that all the way down to concrete, very spotless, come back in with about a quarter inch built up layer of a membrane system that allows the steel, reinforcing steel in that concrete deck to, to be preserved and, and extend the life of that structure. That's going to require us working around the clock uh, beginning early Saturday morning this Saturday. So we're going to be working 24-7 from Saturday about 3 a.m. right now is where it's currently scheduled. And we're going to work uh, straight through till like 5 a.m. Monday morning to, to do the uh, grinding, the waterproof membrane, and then to do the paving between 10th Street and then Main Street Tunnel area here in Oregon City. That's going to kind of get us through that, that Main Street uh, downtown Oregon City corridor area. So with the goal of getting all that work done, we're then going to move to the south end of the project road in Canby, and then the contractor is going to work themselves from Territory Road back to the north, back to the tunnel Main Street area. <coughs> so, so that's really a lot of the work that we're going to be doing on that project. We have a little bit of guardrail work to do in the area just to adjust the rail to proper height for safety. Um, we are going to be doing restriping of the project, and there's going to be some striping changes as well. And uh, the flyers that you have with, with before you today have some of, the, uh, some of those striping changes. And we have those on the back side of the, uh, the flyer, but the big change is going to happen in the area of Kanema. Well, right now, today, it's a four-lane uh, uh, section where there's two lanes southbound, two lanes northbound. And to improve safety and reduce some of the accident history that we've seen over the last about four or five years, there's been a lot of rear-end accident history with turning traffic off the highway. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what we're going to do is restripe that area through Kanema with the center turn lane that's going to allow traffic, traffic to safely uh, get out of that through travel lane and, uh, and then safely make the turn off the highway. So that's going to be an area that we're going to do some restriping on that's going to be different than what you see out there today. So this project will incorporate that as well. Talk about the membrane. Um, some of the, uh, we, we, I talked about the membrane within the city limits here of Oregon City. We do have two structures to the south as well. There's a viaduct just south of Kanema, and then there's the Parrot Creek structure right near that south end road area. And uh, we have that water, same waterproof membrane to do the same type of a 24-7 type operation over, over two additional weekends that will follow uh, the Main Street area after we complete the Main Street area. So we'll, we'll be working uh, again on those structures as we come from the south moving to the north and uh, doing that waterproof membrane Grinding, waterproof membrane, then repaving, and then finally doing the restriping. Um, again, uh, a lot of the uh, striping changes are all about safety, and uh, we, we just see a, an opportunity with this preservation project to improve safety with the striping and uh, making some of those changes that, that I just talked about there. Um, the, the work hours primarily when we, when we get out of this Oregon City area are going to be uh, 7 p.m. at night. Uh, to like 5 a.m. in the morning. So we're not going to do the work within the rush hour traffic. We're going to be in and out for the most part and avoid that north-south commute between Oregon City and Canby uh, on both ends of the, the commute for folks that uh, you know commute through that area. So again, 7 p.m. at night through 5 a.m. in the morning is going to be our primary work hours, except for within the, the Oregon City area. We're going to bump that to 9 p.m. We're going to start just a little bit later. So. So um, I think I've gotten through pretty much everything that I was going to talk about. Kimberly, is there anything else you'd like to add? 
Well, um, we do recognize there's a lot of community events that are happening in the city as well as events happening further south in, in the community south of Oregon City. So when we do our weekend closures, such as the one that's coming up very quickly this weekend, we have taken into consideration all of the special events that are happening in the area and are trying to, our best to ensure that our construction work doesn't interfere with the increased traffic heading to these events. Um, when we do our weekend closures or weekend lane closures, you know, one travel lane will always be open in each direction. However, to keep traffic flowing and to keep people out of the work zone, we are going to have to close several intersections in downtown Oregon City around the clock while we do this work. And that information is on one of the flyers. And um, so we understand that's going to be you know, give some folks some heartburn. However, drivers will always be able to reach um, Main Street in downtown Oregon City. However, they'll just have to find another route and we'll have signs out there directing people where to go. Tomorrow, I'm gonna go door to door to all the businesses as well and let them know what's happening so um, they are not caught off guard either. Um, <coughs> So we're just trying, we realize there's a lot of construction happening, so we're trying to get in and we're trying to get out as quickly as possible. So. Mm -hmm. We've got time left. One time we, everybody. Well, we're, we're trying to be quick and succinct. <laughs> if you guys have any questions for us, we'll be happy to answer sure we them. Do? Yeah, Tom. Um, the first one is Tom, but I do want to hear your input. Uh, Tom O'Brien, please. Uh, yes, Kimberly, I had a couple of questions. Uh, number one, uh, I know it's too late now to do anything about it, but it seems to me that the 3 a.m. start on this critical section is a little bit cutting the close in case you run into a problem on those areas that you're working on. That is such a significant section, and I know the contractors are scheduled. I did want to compliment you on the wonderful job that you've done in the first phase. The section that you've done between the fairgrounds and Territorial Road is a significant improvement in that area. Uh, will we encounter the same kinds of situations with the rail crossing that you've got there with the two crossings in Canby? Where you can't touch it? Well, right in Main Street, Oregon City, we've got the existing concrete panels. We're going to come right up to those. So no, I'm talking the rail crossing that goes yeah, in the old mill site. There too. There's a rail crossing. There's right a rail there. crossing yes. in the street right that goes street. in the old mill. Okay. Yeah, and we'll come right up to that crossing with our our new paving. Okay, it's not going to leave 10, 10 feet of space either side of the track. No. no. Okay. Uh, the other concern I have, and I voiced this at the meeting that you held in Canby. Uh, if I'd like to call your attention to the breakout area that you talked about at Parrot Creek. Northbound traffic on 99 is supposed to be 55 mile an hour through that s segment. It isn't. You have no control over that. But those of us who use South End Road coming north on 99 have to slow from 55 mile an hour to 20 mile an hour, which is a significant safety hazard. There is sufficient space between the bridge over Parrot Creek, of about 100 feet that could be used as a deceleration lane. When I brought it up at the Canby meeting, uh, it was just totally ignored. I really think that you need to look at the safety issue of the rear end collision northbound at that South End Road, Parrot Creek segment because you've got space in there to put a deceleration lane in. It's a matter of do you want to do it? We have had discussions internally about the northbound turning traffic onto South End Road and the unfortunate thing is the discussions kind of went stale to where we were. It wasn't a deceleration lane, but we were looking at making some striping changes that would slow drivers down further south to assist with the turning. And 
I'm not a traffic engineer, so I'm going to mess it up if I explain it any further than that. However, I will follow back up and see where those discussions left see off. See where the discussions are, because you do have it signed further south, right lane ends, but traffic, when it's right. heavy flow, rushes up side by it's side exactly. and run each other off the road. Uh, and that is the problem. Down there, and then they're ticked at one another. And, then and they're, they're just pushing that accelerator to the floor when they get down to Parrot Creek. Uh, and I can tell you, there have been numerous times when I thought I was going to get rear-ended. And, and, we and you have to slow down because it's 20 mile an hour after you make the corner. And mm -hmm. the corner is always full of sand and gravel. So it's a, <laughs> you, From you, you just slide around that corner and it is dangerous. Okay. Understood. And we did have discussions internally about ending that right turn lane a little further to the south so you don't have people speeding up right before that turn you have them already merged into their single lane before that turn however i don't know where those discussions ended up okay so you thank you for the reminder Katie a, a heads up yes on, we know, will definitely follow up and sorry there might be more changes to your project <laughs> it's it's off in the future but we're working here in the city on our what we call our south end concept plan mm -hmm. i heard about which that. is going to add mm -hmm. significant number of new residences along that south end corridor and as bad as it is today, <laughs> it's going to be one heck of a lot worse. Well, considering it's a striping change, it is something that we can will definitely consider. It was a discussion that was taking place, and unfortunately, I think the the discussion just fell through the cracks, and we apologize for that. Okay. Uh, could I ask you, Paul, if I could have you and Mr. Post kind of well, interact? Let's get, here? let's get Howard. Yeah, because I, I I think that. You guys are going to basically address the same issue. If I'm I right. don't know. No, I don't think. Could so. I ask you to come up, sir? Well, you can hear what I said. Mike, I think it's a great no, project. We can't. We, I this, can't hear you. There's a mic. If the microphone. There's, is, there's, there's one right here. over there. There's there's one one over there. I think it's a great project. My question is, are you going to take the rails out across the 99 into Blue Herring for the tunnel? Uh, not with the uh, pro not with this highway project at all. No. You're going to pay right up to them and go over them and not take them out. Pay right up to them. Right up to each side. Okay. Uh, Howard and I represent the Kanema neighborhood, and we and we you, we thank you for changing the lane, changing the restriping coming through, and the safety uh, uh, that we desperately need. But a couple things we I posted it uh, on our TSP. We have a. Um, the need for crosswalk. Uh, it was just one of the things that couldn't be addressed at this time. Uh, under what you guys, the guidelines you had to to do, and we'll accept that. But uh, sometimes, whenever you can put in, uh, infrastructure in, maybe a wiring conduit for a crosswalk or something like that beforehand, so that you don't have to cut the street up sometime. If we ever do want to have some type of uh, pedestrian initiated light in that area, it could be positive. Another thing that we need to look at is the coming down the hill from the still house on the riverside is a historic uh, boardwalk sidewalk um, it's in ODOT right of way it's right now a terrible hazard uh, it's broken up the handrails are, uh, are unacceptable they don't meet any standards by anyone uh, but it is of historic nature predating uh, a lot of the efforts. It, it kind of goes along the line when the original Highway 99 was cut through uh, into Kanema, uh, creating this bypass. Uh, and we really would like for you to take a serious look at it. You should walk it from the uh, John McLaughlin statue all the way down. Take a look at it yourself. Make your own assessments. I think you'll come up with the same understanding that we have that it's uh, the current conditions that uh, ODOT has maintained it is unacceptable and, and is a public safety hazard. And therefore, we would like to, if you can, um, find some uh, funds. Uh, that would allow for some improvements there. I think it would be in your best interest 
I'm just hoping that you'll take a serious look at it. Well, Mr. Edgar, after we visited your neighborhood association uh, last fall or winter, I did check with our maintenance folks, and they told me that we've never maintained that walkway. That's why it's what it is. It's in your right of way. Although it's in our right of way, we might not be responsible for maintaining it. I was just told we are not responsible for that boardwalk. Okay, maybe I'll speak to that a little bit, Paul. That's true. That when that uh, boardwalk was built. ODOT allowed the construction of that in the public right of way, but it was a city commitment. So that lack of maintenance that you're talking about, while I would disagree <laughs> a little bit about the condition of that, it is a city responsibility. So that's a new that's a new piece of information. They pointed that out to us not too long ago. Well, well thank you for your honesty. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> Thank you, John. I'm glad that you now, as the acting head of public works, accept that responsibility. We will be looking forward to talking to you more. <laughs> I just have a simple, simple question. Has there been any publicity in the paper or anywhere so that people around this area will know to stay away? Yeah, yes, stay that away. is something that is um, on my to do list. This week, we earlier in the winter, or excuse me, earlier this year, the Oregonian did some work in the community news about this. However, we will be doing some active media outreach to get this in the paper, possibly some paid advertising as well. This um, project, I'm embarrassed to say, kind of snuck up on me. I thought I had a couple more weeks before we were doing intersection closures, but the good news is the contractor is ready to go. So job, it's man. my job this week to make sure everybody knows about it. Put some signs for they're down both ways. Okay. Big ones. <laughs> Good. Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, John. So, um, Tim, I apologize. I haven't made it to the end of the open houses, so this project's, I'm learning a few things, too, about this project. It hasn't been on my, the question that I had was uh, similar. The railroad crossing at Main Street, uh, while I understand you're paving up to that, I noticed the, the concrete panels on that are moving a little bit, so you might want to look at that. Um, there's the railroad concrete panels themselves? Yeah. Or? Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure if, I can't recall if those were welded together or what the deal was with those, but they're moving okay. and more than they should be. And I don't think just asphalt, tight asphalt's going to prevent that. So I, I don't know how to might deal with that, but better. yeah, I might need some strong. The other thing was the weather and this um, bridge deck work. How does, uh, not to say that the weatherman could be wrong, but it's possible, what, <laughs> how, well, how would that affect this weekend's work schedule? That's a very good question. Uh, the work we have coming up this weekend, it does need to be dry. And if we, if we were to get some uh, rain showers or, or rain, uh, we had a wet June here, uh, that would delay some of the work that we would do. We are gonna start grinding, as I mentioned, on Thursday night. We'll be checking forecasts, um, and we may, if we see weather in the forecast that really has a, the potential of, of really affecting that work, we may have to uh, just delay it to a following weekend. Okay. Uh, we're not so planning would, on that. That would be the plan, to go to a different weekend. It wouldn't different be a plan weekend. to that, take it through Monday to... No. no, we've just really tried very hard to stay out of the uh, Monday through Friday business, downtown business corridor area. And, and uh, really tried to keep this work on weekends to lessen the impact for that reason. So we probably would delay it to the, to the next weekend. Okay. So. And then the last piece was uh, to reemphasize, Tom, that South End 99E, uh, do you, would it be the same kind of solution with raised delineators along there and replacement of those, or is there gonna be a different kind of solution that's gonna go in It'll place? be very similar. There's gonna be a, a small mountable curb Okay. It's uh, it's not going to be concrete. It's a uh, oh, it's kind of a composite curb, but it will have uh, 36 inch tall delineators that will uh, separate, you know, that turning traffic coming from South End Road onto the highway, uh, much like there is today. Although many of those are gone today. So uh, the other thing I'd suggest is, that, you know, again, turning on to South End Road. I know I don't know where point that jurisdictional changes, but I guess it's somewhere outside. Because I know the other cross streets, you're, you're pretty much just paving through, right? You're not going up into those streets. But that one right there is, like you said, it gets hit with so much gravel and people cut that corner so tight that it's it's in need of pavement and probably shoulder work up 
you know, beyond the curb radius there. So I don't know if that's something you can include in your Look project. Look at that. That would uh, be nice. If yeah. You could. We could assess the pavement condition there, and, and uh, there may be a, a way to incorporate, incorporate that. Incorporate so. that. Okay. Great. Yep. Tom? Uh, yeah. Uh, just to continue with what John's as asking for there. Uh, last Friday, I noticed a fellow pulling a camper with his pickup who was coming out of South End, turning southbound on 99. He went immediately through those cones to the right-hand lane, <laughs> which is a restricted lane. Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you used any of the uh, narrow, flat type of delineators in that kind of a situation, which are a little bit more obvious and maybe a little bit stronger than those round posts that keep I mean, you replace them once a year, and they last about six months. He didn't know that he wasn't to go to the right lane, and because he was slow vehicle, he thought he should get over to the right-hand lane, not knowing. So maybe even signage at South End saying, you are restricted to the left lane as you round that corner. Something is – we even had a police officer, county officer, who yeah. ran that light and – T-bone somebody. Crossed over. T-bone somebody oh, okay. in the intersection. So it's a dangerous intersection. It is. And I think it, it is, needs yeah. attention. We, we, we all know this. Excuse me. Okay, are we done, guys? I, if, I, if I could just make one. Oh, I have we're to, way over, Paul, now. Oh, just, just make it quick. I have to re-echo. Uh, driving that all the time, that. that's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're in there in any way with any bucks, and we and and you could spend a few more dollars that can save lives. Just this is a time and place and an event. Please try to save lives. Okay, Thank that, you. Thanks, Mr. William Gifford. We'd like to have the approval of the minutes. Well, I, um, the minutes were distributed last week, thanks to Katie, and uh, I sure hope that uh, we can have a, uh, a motion to uh, motion to approve the minutes as written, Mr. Chair. Yes, I move for approval. I second. I second. Steve and Steve. Well, All in Steve favor? Aye. 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 What was your question, Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> Great, move on. Go ahead. All in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 All opposed? All abstain? <laughs> I mean, any abstentions? Okay. Okay. They get back on schedule. If she'll leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Any old business? I don't know of any old business. The only old business that I can think of was oh, the, uh, yes, the, uh, sorry. the CIC uh, booth at the farmer's market. But okay, well, that, well, that I, doesn't need anything. Okay. I, was, um, I talked to Tom Guile, and he said that on the bylaws, they're stu he's still working on them, and We'll give a report when we get it. That would be under the committee reports. Oh, I'm past it. We don't have to do that now. You got it. Okay, new business. Okay, let's talk about the, William, let's talk about the uh, Saturday market. Oh, uh, two things then under new business. One is, no, the Saturday market was fourth Saturdays. Fourth Saturdays, if anybody wants to show up, that's fine. Otherwise, Larry and I are doing the, the, uh, the, the CIC booth out at Farmer's Market from 830 to 2. Uh, however, we also have an opportunity to have a booth at the National Night Out. And we have in the past few years had a booth at the National Night Out. Um, and I would propose that we continue to have a booth there. And uh, they're going to have space for us. And so I'm going to bring the booth and set it up. When is the date? When is National Night Out? August 14th? August, August 7th. August 7th. What do you August sell? Oh, we don't sell anything. It's just informational only. I don't know what we're going to sell. Sir, and that's about it. Could you please quit that's disrupting our meeting, please? Yeah. You're welcome to stay here, but please don't risk disrupt our meeting. Thank you. And that's all I had under new business. Oh, okay. that's under, I guess yeah, that's new business. Uh, oh, and then you've got another item A there. The yeah. September CIC meeting. Yeah, the question about the September CIC meeting. Um, I, I brought that on to the agenda. Okay. Um, our normal meeting time is the first Monday of every month at 7 p.m., and the first Monday in September is Labor Day. Right. Um, so City Hall is closed. 
And I believe last year, I think you guys might have did it the following Monday, so the week after um, Labor Day. We try is that. that. Right? We try that, and uh, the second Monday of every month is uh, is usually planning uh, planning. Right. Commission. That's what I was going to mention. So I'm not sure what we wanted to do for the. Do we want to not have it? That's one? why I, yeah. I don't know. That's that sounds good to me. I think we skipped <laughs> one last year. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. Got we did my happen. vote. Well, you guys, let's put that out for a vote. Okay. Is anybody I'd like to make a motion that we? Well, you make that motion, will you, sir? I'd like to make a motion that we do not hold a September meeting due to the conflict with Labor Day. I second. So all those Tom in favor? Yep. Aye. 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 I think it's unanimous. Yep. Thank you, guys. Okay. Ask OCPW. Where all Mr. eyes are on you. <laughs> Big John. <laughs> John and I are doing this for the first time, and I know I'm nervous. <laughs> well, I, I'm not. Uh, last time I was at a CIC meeting was when we were in the fire station. It was a lot, uh, <laughs> lot was less formal, put it that way. Um, and I. Just checking in with Nancy, she says, well, I always like to bring something of information to the CIC. So I uh, put together something real quickly. I'm assuming uh, you're mostly looking for project updates, but feel free to ask. So do you, tell me, do you ask questions or do you want me to tell you information? <laughs> We'd like you to share information. Okay. So I will try to do that. So I've handed out the 2012 slurry seal project list. <laughs> That's on one side, and on the other side is the 2012 paving projects. So the slurry seal projects are have bid, and uh, we've awarded a contract to Black Line Construction. Um, I think the amount is around 136,000, um, and so everything on these in in these little boxes that's highlighted in red is going to be uh, receive a, a slurry seal treatment. So that's a preventative means. Remember slurry seals from past presentations that I'm sure you've all just um, enjoyed is a, is a, is a thin uh, coating. It's not necessarily a thick asphalt layer. So it's a thin coating. Okay? But it's not a thin line just because they did. Oh, the, so they, the, the, the operation that happens before we slurry seal, which we don't necessarily map out, is we do crack sealing. So okay, the, that's what you okay. the, the street crew comes through, uh, Kevin Hanks and Matt Polison, I think yeah, you've um, run into them. They, they run that crack seal crew. We try to seal the cracks and then come along with the slurry seal treatment. So this <laughs> is what's planned for 2012 for our slurry seal projects. And that's probably not going to start until the first part of August. So we've got a contractor, but – and. Uh, notices will be sent to those within, you know, fronting those pro projects. But um, other than that, um, in Dorham, usually if you've been in a neighborhood where we've done slurry seals, they put out barriers that notify the property owners of, that not to park cars and to turn on, you know, we send them a letter that says keep your irrigation turned off, all those kinds of things. So there's put your sports car away for a week. <clears throat> put your sports car away. Not for a week. That, that, <laughs> that heals up pretty quickly, Larry. <laughs> Um, the second list is the 2000, or the second map is the 2012 paving projects, and we've got quite a few of those. We're going to, uh, we're right now we're we're in the process of advertising for bids. Mm, if you're going to ask me the bid opening date, it's July 10th, and uh, hopefully we'll generate a fair amount of interest. These vary from anything from a thin overlay to a millen overlay. In some places like Barkley Hills Drive, the lower end of Barkley Hills Drive, we're actually bidding that uh, to do what we call a cement treated base uh, project. So they, they actually remove the asphalt and then till in some cement treated base into the existing mm -hmm. soil conditions, uh, con compact that, and then pave over it. Wow. So there's that, that, that's a bigger job. If you're familiar with Barkley Hills Drive, you know that that lower section's been settling. It's an, it's an old slide as well. And so we're just going to do our best to put that back into uh, the grade that it was originally designed to be at. Um, Division Street and Malala Avenue, I want you to keep in mind that we, we think those projects are special projects that uh, definitely warrant more than we're proposing to do in 2012. They're, um, 
more like boulevard projects. They need sidewalks, they need ADA improvements, they really need to be reconstructed for uh, heavier street traffic, at least Division Street. Malala, as many of you know, that's part of the, there's a, there's a full plan on what we would be doing um, along Malala Boulevard with regard to curb extensions, corner enhancement treatments, um, you know, signal improvements, the whole gamut. So uh, street lighting, you know, street trees, that, that, that boulevard is a corridor that's got some real plans behind what needs to be done. We're not doing that in 2012. What we're doing in 2012 is a thin mill, overlay, restriping. So it's kind of like the ODOT job. It preserves pavement. It doesn't build a boulevard. Does the Division Malala Avenue intersection still be projected for a roundabout? Yes, it is. It's, I believe that's Office. still shown as a project in the TSP. Okay. Yeah. One suggestion, John. Uh, we here on the CIC applaud what's going on in trying to save our city streets. The general public does not know where their special fee is going. Is there some way that this information can get into Trail News explaining that the fee that they see showing up on their utility bill is what's allowing the city to keep the infrastructure in repair? Good suggestion. Sometimes the list gets pretty long, um, so it consumes a fair amount of the trail news. But uh, it's a good suggestion, Tom. And I feel like we've done, we've reached, been to many, many neighborhood meetings for this presentation. Which again, I know there's not a lot of uh, tenants at those. It's on the website. We actually also did the five-year plan, which I think you know many of you are aware of for what we're planning to do for the next five years. That's posted on the website. So uh, uh, the newsletter is another another way we the should. The trail news is something almost everyone in the city at one time or another picks up and reads. Okay, it's it's your best vehicle for publication. I'm next, but go ahead. Uh, last year, when they did repavement on Myers and Leland, they had a real nice signage that indicated it was uh, the use of our, our uh, street uh, street transfer repair tax pavement yeah. maintenance uh, utility. Uh, John, last week I talked to Kevin. He wasn't aware. Yet from the contractor where where they were going to start the sewer sewer project. Have you been updated yet on that? No, that's true. Usually we meet with them. Uh, it, you know, to be quite honest with you, sorry, seals with this amount of uh, work is probably about a three-day project, and we ask them to spread that so that, especially some of the longer streets, uh, still provide a reasonable walking distance for property owners, but we do uh, we won't get a detailed list from them for a couple weeks probably. And when we get that, we'll share that with those people that are affected. Um, am, I, am I disconnected? Well, of course. So the um, the other uh, quick updates I'll give you. I've got a little bit of information on these. I'm again trying to stay up to speed with many of these different projects that are going on. But Main Street, as if you haven't driven it, they've paved from fifth to seventh and 7th Street as well. So for the most part, that section of the project is complete. They were supposed to restripe it today. Uh, haven't been there, but I'll, I'll believe the update. The restriping uh, con contains the arrows and so forth? Uh, well, per it will. Yes, it will. Whether right that happened today, I, arrows on it. Yeah, I, don't, I, I can't tell you what exactly happened today. I just said st striping was to start today. Um, the other blocks from 8th to 10th, you know, we're still working on sidewalks and street lights and, and tree wells and, and water lines, and it's still pretty much a construction zone down there. So if you've been through there, you notice that as well. Um, Beaver Creek Road at um, Malala Avenue. So if you're southbound on Beaver Creek Road, heading towards the, from the, from the county building, headed towards the, Community College um, at Malala Avenue intersection, we're adding a, a dedicated right turn lane. Wonderful. And, and you probably noticed uh, some of the franchise utilities moving mm -hmm. signal boxes Comcast and control. Right. Mm -hmm. So Century Link, sorry. we've 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 hired, uh, that that project has also been bid and a precon has been hold, held. Kodiak Pacific is going to be the contractor on that. Um, I have dates. I don't. Um, they had the pre-con last week. Oh, one of the long lead items there is a new signal 
arm and signal pole. So usually, even though the contractor's got the contract, a lot of that work <coughs> doesn't start because he's waiting on the on the, the those long lead items to arrive. So my understanding is that'll be done by mid-August. And John, I understand that that's being funded by the SDCs from the county when they built in their uh, their campus up there. That was part of the agreement that. They expected that there would be additional traffic because of that campus, and so their SDCs accounted for uh, most all of that funding for that for that right turn lane. That's correct. That's correct. You win the prize. Oh, I always like to know where the money's coming from. And that's right. So your street utility fee does not pay for that project. Okay. The jug handle, another uh, project that I know you're all familiar <laughs> with. The uh, contractor is about to engage on closing a section of Clackamas River Drive really between uh, Stein Oil and mm -hmm. the Roundabout and uh, they will have built um, Washington Street through the Roundabout so and underneath the new bridge so uh, vehicles traveling towards Stein Oil from say out on Clackamas River Drive will no longer be able to get to Stein Oil that way they'll have to come through the Roundabout and under the new bridge and out near Home Depot and then uh, come, come across 213 to get to Stein Ooh. Oil, if they need to get to Stein Oil. But they'll be using the new roadway, essentially. So that's a pretty big... Um, detour. Well, that's a big detour for Stein, but it's, yeah. a pretty, it's, a, it's, it's also a milestone, uh, milestone yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that is pretty huge. So um, the, the work... Um, it's going to happen mid-July. That closure is going to happen mid-July, and it's about six to eight weeks worth of closure. So if you want to stop at Stein Oil, you got to use 213. Just in time for their new car wash. Yeah. <laughs> that's for the new re redesigned <laughs> that's car wash. preliminary information, William. I'm not sure. I don't, yeah, the new car wash is, is no, a new a proposal. That last I, month. Did they? Yeah. Okay. I just saw the plan, so you guys knew oh, yeah, things we well ahead. way before yeah, me. Yeah. Um, let's see. Of course, you know Nancy's last day was today, so that's why she chose. She could have made it to this meeting, she don't you think? Slacker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so yes, for a few weeks, I'll be the interim city engineer, public works director, um, and do my best to serve uh, the needs of the city. So, and what's stopping you from being permanent? Uh, there's a selection process. They're going to go through a selection process, and I think the uh, We've already best, chosen you. best yeah, man we, or woman will you've win. Got, <laughs> you've got Tom in my vote. <laughs> you, better, you better talk to David Frazier. Right. <laughs> He's, he makes that decision. But no, that, so we'll, that we will be advertising for that uh, public works director position, and um, I'll, I'm sure I'll, I'll apply. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> well, you've done a great job for us, so. Yeah, so I'll be attending these meetings, except for the September. That's nice for a little break. Um, <laughs> and I cover this meeting in the Transportation uh, Advisory Committee meeting, which I guess I'll put a plug in for them as well. Um, great committee. We've got a committee member that's sitting in your audience right now. He was, he left. No, he's still oh, here. Oh, yeah. And um, that it just really feels like with the transportation system plan and uh, some new members, there's a renewed focus there. And uh, you know my rec my my recommendation is that this committee uh, send a representative to that meeting as well because that uh, I think most transportation issues should, in my opinion, go through that committee before they even come to I this. I think one. so too. Okay, who said that? Okay, would you Paul, like to be Paul comes to meetings once in a while. Yeah, he does. <laughs> okay, I thank you. Uh, can I yeah. can I ask of John a question? Well, if you want to. Yeah. Now, now that we know who's responsible for the Kanema si sidewalk, <laughs> boardwalk. <laughs> and, and boardwalk, and uh, and then the the cobble, uh, you know, Fifth Avenue coming off of South End Road, uh, <laughs> Ooh. that that looks like a corn cob, mm -hmm. or or corn cobs are be are better. We would <laughs> we would. Uh, love to uh, see your prioritizations listings on that show up someplace Just as low as they may be <laughs> <laughs> it's the, uh, the list. <laughs> okay next on up list. Mr. Paul Edgar committee reports oh land use committee well on land use uh, 
I brought uh, sent out one thing on on that <coughs> but, uh, that it's like the uh, car wash thing. Uh, sometimes when we have some issues that come along uh, that really require should be brought before the citizen involvement committee whenever we can uh, as a whole committee. Uh, I to me I just think that. Uh, some of the though this last adjustment that the car wash people are asking for or the Oregon City uh, shopping center asked for some waivers on on some sign code implications um, sometimes if they if it's possible I'd like to see us ask those people to come briefly before this uh, the CIC rather than just having us individually review it or or to have uh, uh, it kind of slide by without a really oversight, and I think that's. Uh, if I could, Katie, I just think that sometimes if we get some of these things that are in in the CIC area, if they could just be, uh, if the people have the time and they could be uh, asked to come before it, we have we could put them on the agenda. It would be. I think it just would be better for everyone in the CIC to review those. Okay, thank you, Paul. I'm not sure what you're well, referring is, to. I'm these sorry. are land I, use. These are land use considerations that 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 come before the CIC. Right. Was and, there something that came before you that hasn't come before the CIC? Well, the, there's sorry. The, there's there was another one that came out right now on a revision of the sign code of uh, the signage for Oregon City Shopping Center, yeah. and then there was another one for uh, reviewing some of the the the. Design considerations for the uh, uh, car wash at at, uh, at Stein Oil, and you know I don't know just to, just to me whenever we can I just mm -hmm. rather see uh, some of these things uh, uh, come before us. Didn't both of those come before us? One, t yeah, but the they're asking meetings? they're asking for a change. Oh, okay. Kathy on the land queue. Uh, I, I said, uh, okay, bylaws. I understand the bylaws. Would you please say that again? Uh, okay. <laughs> yep. Tom Garo gave me. We talked, and he said that since he wasn't going to be here, just reiterate that he is working on them. And we are as soon as we get them ready, should ask you, Tom. Yeah, for Tom's okay. working with us. So, all right. As soon as we get them, you'll know. Okay. I thank you. And roundtable discussion. Let's start with Steve Anderson. Uh. <laughs> I'm now working, as I understand. I mean, the mic is now. I hear you now. Yeah. yeah. Someone pushed my button, so I'm. <laughs> oh, look, Steve's here. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Hill and Dale. We're having our uh, our quarterly uh, neighborhood meeting tomorrow night in my uh, palatial estate uh, on Myers Road. You're all welcome to come. Starts at 7 p.m. 19385 Myers Road. Uh, we'll park both in the front of the garage and around back where the our gathering is actually going to be. Uh, Bonnie's making some wonderful dessert, so uh, y'all come, as they say. <laughs> is there something that we could bring? A lawn chair. You got it. A lawn chair. Although there will be plenty of seating, <coughs> but you just don't know. Yeah. Uh, if I have enough. Um, we have a lot of things going on in Hillendale. Uh, we talked about the restriping there at Malala and Beaver Creek. Uh, that's going to be a welcome change, adding one more lane in there so that we have more through traffic through that intersection. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, event coming up uh, during uh, the month of August um, movies in the Park, which was uh, tried, I believe, last year and was very successful. Each one of the weeks in August will have a family movie where you can bring uh, everyone in the family, bring your lawn chair, bring a picnic uh, dinner um, in a blanket and just have a good time in Wesley Lynn Park and enjoy a family movie uh, during that evening. Um, that's about all I have to to go on. I'll pass it on. Okay, Katie. I don't have anything. Thank you. Okay. John, do you have anything? Nothing more. William? 
I have a few things to follow up on Hillendale. We did have a, uh, a land use issue in Hillendale that the, uh, the county has acquired the, um, the building that is um, between where the elections building is now on Red Soil's Court, between the elections building and Hillendale Park. There is another uh, tilt up building there that the county had acquired and they are proposing to use half of that for uh, county document storage and the other half for evidence storage. Mm -hmm. In the parking lot between that building and the park, they anticipate parking some vehicles that they feel need some security. Uh, for example, there might be some uh, CSI uh, trucks or some uh, vehicles are, are used for evidence or whatever. And they had proposed putting up a fence between that parking lot and, uh, and Hillendale Park. Currently there is no fence right there. And they were proposing a 12-foot chain link fence. <laughs> well, two years ago, city code changed and said we can't have chain link fences at all. And secondly is uh, you can't have a fence over six feet. And so they're asking, so the county was asking for two variances. And, um, and so they had, a, they had to have a neighborhood presentation uh, and it was held at the county building, and um, and they were told that that's you know they're going to have to come up with something else. They were proposing this 12 foot chain link with colored slats in it, and um, <laughs> so we'll see what they come back with for Plan B because that's obviously not going to fly with uh, current city code. And we were not the Hillendale Association was not. We haven't voted on it. We will tomorrow night, I imagine. We have yeah, not. Yeah. I had the letter from uh, Sarah Architects on that, so we will be. It's yeah. on the agenda. Okay. Uh, let me see. What else? That's Hillendale. Um, the um, Tower Vista Neighborhood Association, uh, I was asked to chair that since, there, uh, since, uh, since um, Scott, uh, Scott Young is still uh, laid up. And so we had a guest speaker of Nancy Bush. Uh, we had... I'm trying to remember, it must have been about 15 to 18 neighbors there. Uh, it was very well attended. And we, have a, um, and we have a gentleman who has stepped up and said that he will chair uh, our next quarterly meeting. So although we don't have a full-blown chair yet, that neighborhood, I mean, when, when you get 15 people showing up at a neighborhood association meeting and you've got somebody who's willing to step up and chair the next meeting, I'd say, you know, I'd call that Tower Vista an active neighborhood association. Uh, I was also invited to... Um, to attend the, uh, the Rivercrest Neighborhood Association and Irene Olson, uh, uh, I appreciate her being here uh, to verify that uh, I had been invited to try to incentivize some, uh, some Rivercrest neighbors to start, start showing some um, attendance at the CIC. Bruce Danielson said that he was motivated, but apparently that was short-lived. Uh, he didn't make it, but Irene, God bless her, has stepped up and said, I'll at least attend and see if I can stay awake through the whole thing. So, well, I think those were your words. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're, we're all Good struggling words. with the same issue, Terrible. believe me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was Rivercrest. And um, Thank you, uh, what's another one? Uh, Barclay Hills Neighborhood Association. Uh, their uh, their acting chair, uh, um, Walter White, has is going to be out of town for his meeting next week. Is it right. next week? And he wrote and asked me if I would chair that meeting for them. So. Uh, so I'll be doing that. In other news in Hillendale Association, oh, and also since Rachel Gunderson isn't here for the chamber, I can mention uh, a couple of things. Benchmade Knife is having a big sale today and tomorrow from 8.30 to 5, like 50 to 70 percent off of some of the most world-class incredible knives. So if any of you are interested in knives, uh, stop by Benchmade. I hope you all know where that is up on, uh, on uh, Red Soils Court there one of the largest manufacturers in the city, and we need to support them. Uh, and also, uh, from a chamber perspective, notice that there is a, a new business down on, uh, on Highway 99. Uh, uh, Lear Canopy Tops has moved in, and that's, uh, that's a big deal. And they've been there for about a month, and uh, we're welcoming another new business to, uh, to the community. And a coffee shop on Mulholland Oh, yes, and the Edenway, formerly known as the Edenway Coffee Shop, up on where close to division, and, uh, and Molala has reopened. They had their, their grand opening on June 18th, and they're going to try it again. Bigfoot on... Big Bigfoot Big Bakery. Bigfoot Bakery. Good call. Yep. Yeah. 
Uh, when is it open? Red. It's open. Oh, good. When, cool. Is it open? I thought it was open in the night. It's open already. So they it's took the place today. of where Muno's Bakery used to be. So we have that, that position Great. filled as well. So I'd say we're getting there. And that's all I had to report. Okay. I would like to talk about Caulfield Neighborhood Association. <laughs> we had our meeting Tuesday night. We had 59 people sign their guest register. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you glutton. <laughs> I know. And we had it in my garage because we didn't have confidence in the rain. Uh, it went very well. The fire department came, but they were ru they rudely left us for some kind of traffic accident or something. But they did come back, and it was wonderful. And the one thing that we brought up in that meeting is that um, we've got some traffic issues that we want to take on as a neighborhood association, and maybe we could kind of work with other representatives to try and get uh, a time light on Beaver Creek and I know I forget this street that I live on all the time no, no, Myers, no. Myers, 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 Myers Myers Road that is a big problem and the other end of Myers Road of Molala is a big problem and I was with William tonight we drove past that that's a Glen Oak Glen Oak, Glen Oak at 213 Glen Oak at 213 that's not Molala anymore is it no but you were close used to be uh, William brought up the fact that using one of these solid yellow lights is a me the word. They call them um, permissive, yes, permissive yellow lights. Yeah. Is that a good idea, John? Yeah, and we've talked to the state. There's actually a fair amount of uh, email correspondence. I th well, anyway, yeah, we've talked to the state about that. They have a response to that. If uh, we got letters from the Caulfield Neighborhood Association and even individual letters asking for that, would that help your, your case? In it? Yeah, and I, I think I'll make a note to send you the email response and you can, you know, you can actually, uh, we, and maybe some contact, maybe I'll copy the appropriate people at ODOT because I think the more uh, people kind of making their concerns heard, yeah. the better. Now, the, the response that we got the other night, I'm very proud. It's the general consensus that we've done a lot of little things. And uh, you know, okay. they're starting to, uh, you know, we, we realize that we're not going to run the city, but getting the blackberries cut around the soccer field is pretty cool. <laughs> so, you know, we got the detention pond done, it works wonderfully. And uh, the school, the school speed limit, it, it, uh, it hasn't changed, <laughs> although it's supposed to, but that's okay. So anyway, we're real happy, and uh, I would like to see if Mr. Tom O'Brien has anything to say. Hazel Grove Wrestling Farms, and I pass. Okay. Oh, Hazel, Hazel Grove Wrestling Farm, and it's Kathy, and we have our meeting in September. I do not recall the, the date, so actually next month we can let you know. In um, July 19th, Phil Stocking, Phil Hart will be having La Hacienda, Provide the food for our barbecue and the concert in the park, and the profits will go to fill a stocking. Oh, that's beautiful. And we haven't picked a speaker yet, so hopefully Tom gets we'll puts it. He, he'll put his thinking hat on for me. So that's it. Um, I would, uh, Howard and I have been working feverishly uh, with. Uh, Metro in a uh, in trying to uh, protect the interests of the city uh, in association with their uh, reinventing and uh, redeveloping significant areas of the Kanema Bluff, and uh, when 150 fir trees are up to be plus to be cut. Uh, the carbon sequestrian capabilities of those fir tree loss cannot be replaced in over a hundred years. So on an environmental side, there are environmental questions about uh, appropriateness of what the plan is. And then we get into the areas of historic areas where over 10,000 natives died on the Kanema Bluff in encampments from white man's diseases. And when you go through with logging trucks and skidders and things like this in very sacred lands, it also creates significant cons considerations. 
Then you get into the area of the Kanema Cemetery Road, which is the original wagon road documented in a McLaughlin map that shows that this was the original wagon road out of Oregon City from in the 1840s through probably 1852 as the exclusive road south. Uh, and when you start disturbing these things, they are of significance. On the plus side for Metro's half, they are looking to improve uh, bird habitat and improve a very uh, oak savanna, which is a very endangered uh, 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 type of, air, uh, of environment that we have uh, in Kanema. And so what they want to do is cut back these fir trees that put shade onto oak trees. And in all of this, it's not simple. And many of us have been trying to wait it all out and think it through. And in some cases, I've come with critical thinking that it's 50-50. It's not been one side wins or one side loses, but maybe there are some wins and losses both ways. And it's really coming along. And so I want to really turn around and say, I, I couldn't thank or have anyone better than Howard Post uh, with me and we, me with him um, uh, as we both have been trying to represent the, the, the importance of uh, this section of history that's within Oregon City and within our auspices of it's within the city boundaries of Oregon City. And uh, I want to tell you that uh, it's not been simple for either Howard or myself and uh, we have not cast votes one way or another. We're still listening and working and, and for, the, for everyone's benefit we found that actually Metro uh, has put an A team with us and uh, have been working with us uh, but it's uh, extremely challenging because uh, not everyone fully understands this area like we do or maybe or have the passion of trying to protect the resources that we do. So uh, uh, for anyone uh, to have a team where I, I just say thank you Howard. Okay, I really want to cut you short Paul but I have, I have a question for you. Would you two, you and Howard, consider coming to Caulfield and making a presentation? Because you just made a real good one right there. <coughs> I'll get you a date. Not this next time, but probably in October. It's it's tough. Okay. Not, not, I got not happy. I'll, I'll get a hold of you. <laughs> Steve. Thanks. You bet. Okay, Steve Van Haverbeek from Park Place Neighborhood. Um, let's see, things going on. We've got uh, people who are involved in getting the sidewalk in from Holcomb School up Holcomb up to the uh, next neighborhood, which is will be the, the next piece that we can get some safety on a very dangerous uh, <coughs> roadway, and it's the only connector. So... Looks like that's going forward. What? Well, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Get what side? Getting a sidewalk put in. Oh. Between okay. Holcomb School. Is that city doing that? Yeah. Okay. Well, there's been uh, a grant application that's been submitted, and uh, yes. I know Kathy Griffin's been working with Jonathan uh, and not Jonathan Anderson. Well, John Anderson. There's there's quite a group up there in Holcomb that you're probably involved with the neighborhood association. In fact, they got their own little transportation advisory committee up in your neighborhood right now and they're doing a great job volunteering <laughs> and so they put a fair amount of effort into this grant application we're hearing that the project may not have as much uh, may not meet the criteria as well as others so uh, we're not we don't know but right now we've submitted that that's been submitted so and you know, the little black uh, X. it's a, uh, is that a metro enhancement or no is no it's not a local no it's not a local grant application it's a <laughs> it's a state <laughs> grant application state grant. okay it's, um, somewhat it's not safe routes to school but it's similar to that okay. so there's a okay. there's a uh, state funding mechanism for those and it really goes I think the intent is to extend the Holcomb Boulevard sidewalks further up the hill from 
Great. from the school. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. And it takes it up to, I forget, the Holcomb Ridge. Is that the next yeah. subdivision up there? Yeah. Barlow Crest. Barlow Crest. Barlow Crest. Crest. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, our next uh, Holcomb Community Cleanup will be on July 21st. Hopefully we don't have 100 degrees. We've been having 12 to 15 people volunteering uh, for two to six hours on those days. Uh, last time we cleared a whole bunch of blackberries. We're going to uh, try and clear more blackberries uh, in July. We're looking for other projects to work on in August, September, and October. I don't think we want to continue doing those. So had the idea of maybe whitewashing the fence at the uh, straight community uh, cemetery. Um, but we're looking for um, ideas anywhere in the city. Oh, that's oh. very nice. Uh, let's see, was there another? Our next meeting uh, we will have a steering committee meeting on August 20th and our have another one in September but our next uh, general meeting will not be until October 15th at which time uh, it's almost a quarter hour, Mo will be our speaker mm. okay good Alice Yes, um, McLaughlin Neighborhood normally meets on the first Thursday of every month, but due to concerts in the park in July and August, we meet on the second Wednesday. Right. And uh, one of the concerns we had this particular meeting, the one coming up next week is a general meeting for us. We alternate, as most of you do, with general meeting and then steering committee the following month. There was no money left in the newsletter budget for us to get our newsletter out for this general meeting. <coughs> so we are funding it ourselves. We did fund part of the last newsletter that went out. And we are very frustrated that there's not enough yeah. budget for us to communicate with our citizens. That we, f <laughs> I'm speaking on behalf of the steering committee now and that we we feel strongly that if the city wants us to be a part of the communication process, we need to be able to have that avenue of communication. Be that as it may, we also recognize that websites are very helpful and most people are, are savvy enough to go on websites, so we're going to try to utilize our, our website more and you know, work within the system. You know, we'll, we'll make our complaints, but then we'll go on and you know, we have to find a solution to it. And lastly, I just want to share that we, uh, a few years back, adopted 7th Street, and we had a cleanup a couple weekends ago. I can't report on it I wasn't, because I wasn't able to help this time around, but we don't get as many volunteers as you do. We only have maybe a handful, but it only takes us a couple hours, and we're happy to do it, and it does always look better when we get done, and I'm happy to report that we, we continue to do that. Thank you for your work. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm Ingra Rickenbach from the South End Neighborhood Association and we had our steering committee meeting last week and um, we had a person from the community college who did a survey for us in the neighborhood, took 140 surveys out and delivered them and talked to the people and asked them to respond to the survey and then send it back in. and. Of the 140, we had 57 that responded, and so we have a, a booklet that tells what things... Ingrid, hey, could you please speak up? I, I just can't hear you. Is this any better? Yeah. Okay. So we had someone from the community college who, was, um, who did a survey for us so we would know what the priorities were in our neighborhood. He randomly selected 140 people that off... Um, the property lists, I think, and went to those properties, gave them a survey, asked them to return it, and there was money for return postage. Of the 140, 57 
responded, and we appreciate those responding, and that kind of um, shows that our neighborhood isn't real interested in understanding the neighborhood association, some of them, mm -hmm. and um, so we're trying to get out and communicate with the neighbors and let them, and listen to what they are concerned about, and so the report was just passed from one member to another, and so we, and they, he made all sorts of charts and things for us, but um, we'll use that in planning for things for our neighborhood. Our next neighborhood meeting is going to be the third Thursday in August, and it's going to be held at Chapin Park. And so um, you can watch for details about that. Okay, uh, go ahead. Ingra, I have a question. Uh, would you be willing to share the results of that survey with the rest of the CIC? Maybe we could use surveys like that in each of our neighborhoods to ask our neighbors what, what's going on or what their opinions are. Yeah, I could ask. I don't know if that's proprietary information, but it'd be nice to know what questions they what came questions up with were and, asked. and the methodology that he used to, uh, to choose them. And I'll talk to them, and you want me to see about bringing that next time? Well, that'd be great. That'd be great. Okay. David, can I put you off for just a second? John, you had another, another remark. Uh, I'm, yeah, I forgot to mention this, and I, some of you may have heard this because uh, the Rotary and uh, really a volunteer organization got a grant for uh, from the... Oh, it's not the Metro Grant, it's the... Um, enhancement Grant. Enhancement Grant. No, it's, no, it's, it's, it's Civic, Improvement, Civic Trust. Improvement Trust Grant, that's the one. Um, for oh, 17000 and some dollars to put, to put lighting in the Singer Falls. It used oh, to be lit. Yeah, it used to be. Um, and uh, hasn't been lit for years. I don't know if you've noticed, but we've spent a lot of. There's been a lot of volunteer effort to kind of clean that area along the along the falls as well. And we've been uh, we've been doing work in the elevator and, and pressure washing the stairs, really kind of clean that up. But this l effort to light the falls is uh, going to be pretty unique. And I hey, think the great. community we've had uh, again participants. There's volunteers from Park Place, the Rotary, Marsha Wimmer with the Rotary Club is involved, um, Lloyd Purdy with Main Street involved, Dan and uh, Dan Holliday, uh, Don Slack, Nick Dickerman, they've all been kind of on that project team and together we hope to order the lighting and get volunteers to do, volunteers from the um, electric, electricians union to do uh, the conduit work and electrical work that we need to do. So. The idea would be you'd have the op option of, I don't remember what the cal color palette is, but it's in the hundreds, if not thousands of different shades of light that we could uh, uh, project on the water in each of the five bays of the pools. So it would be very nice. LED lights, um, controller, nice nice facility. So, Is this going to be connected to solar, co solar connectors? Or? Well, uh, and not at this point. Uh, that's an option. That's an option. At this point, the funding doesn't allow for that. But it'd be nice to be solar driven as well, wouldn't it? Or water driven. Well, well, or water, 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 water driven <laughs> would be nice too. Hydro, hydraulic driven. Paper mills are going out. You guys need to improve with the Laughlin Boulevard. You guys need to improve 82nd Avenue. Could you please let us conduct our meeting? I've asked you before. Your, their gateways, your End the conversation. David? Anything else? Anything? Any please. He doesn't have any report. Okay. Ma'am? Eileen. Eileen. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Eileen, not Irene. Bang. Yeah, Eileen, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Eileen. Yeah. Can you, I'm sorry, can you come up to the mic? Yeah. Can you, I'm sorry, can you come up to the mic? <laughs> sorry, because we won't get your comments on the on the video if you don't. Thank you. Dave's mic. Oh, okay. Is it on? Since I... It is. is that working? You have yeah. to get real close to it, though. Huh? Yeah. You have to get real close to it. Ooh. <laughs> Just last week or week before last, I was at our neighborhood association meeting, and William came along, and now I'm here. <laughs> the one thing that we do have going in August, you know, Rivercrest is a little more independent. <laughs> we are going to have our own night out 
on Tuesday night, the second Tuesday of August, is our neighborhood <coughs> barbecue. And oh, the kids have fun. We do a um, bicycle parade. All the kids do their bicycles. We've got two or three people in our neighborhood who Just bring us happy of the pudding. We have people who have the antique cars that join in our parade. We have a lot of fun. We made the money to pay for this by selling hanging baskets in the day before Mother's Day. We did very nicely with that. I can't remember when our next meeting is, but I'll see you next. Do we have a meeting in August? Yes. We just don't have one in September. Okay. Now I have a, I'll sit. I made Thank 12 you. flower pots for you guys huh? and nobody came and got them. You I, did what? I made 12 watermelon flower pots and for your sale and nobody came and got them. Because you guys withdrew from the CIC there for a while. But I've got them for you <laughs> next year. Sir didn't tell us. Right? All right. <laughs> Sir, did you have anything? Oh, Howard. Howard. Oh, Howard. Howard. I thought he already talked. I'm sorry, Howard. Are you done? No hard feelings? No. Okay. Sir? Bob. Bob? Sir Bob, nothing. Sir Bob, nothing? Now, Sir, go ahead. Can I jump back just for a second? Yeah. Um, since you uh, so kindly uh, uh, mentioned the National Night Out, yours is on the 14th, is that correct? Yes. The second Tuesday. Uh, the city is also involved in our annual National Night Out, and that's on the first Tuesday of August on August 7th. <coughs> That's going to be at Chapin Park. The theme this year is going to be Luau. That's right up your alley. That's right up my alley. We're also uh, offering raffle tickets for some great prizes. You got to have a Hawaiian shirt on to get a raffle ticket. So make sure you wear your loudest and uh, uh, most colorful Hawaiian shirt and uh, join us for a luau at Chapin Park on August 7th. Thank you. On uh, that point, this meeting is adjourned. Yeah. Good.